And at the last meeting, the ECB announced that they would lean more heavily on those purchases. But listening to your colleague earlier, Klaas Knott, he's saying that there is a view out there that these purchases would have to start slowing down in the second half of the year. Is there a possibility that the ECB may not end up using the full 1.85 trillion euros PEP envelope? When we decided in December uh, an extension of uh, the PEP program, we made a change uh, by changing from a volume which needs to be spent to a volume which can be spent, and if needed, we increase that. So what amount of money will be spent is the, made dependent on the quarter in advance and the decision in uh, for the third quarter will make her at the end of the second quarter. And hopefully by the time there will be a possibility to reduce again uh, uh, the purchases. Um, sir, when it comes to the outlook for the European recovery, a lot hinges on its vaccination rollout program. And yesterday we got a little bit of news on that front with the uh, European Medicines Agency's new assessment of the AstraZeneca vaccine. And we know that various European countries have already moved to restrict use of the vaccine to older individuals. Are you concerned about how long it could take the EU to get through this pandemic? And if it does take longer than expected, what does that mean for your monetary policy stance? Definitely, uh, there are concerns that vaccination may not happen as quickly as we had hoped. At the moment, the dynamics has increased again. And what happened to AstraZeneca, of course, can also happen to other vaccines. And uh, there is with any vaccine a trade off uh, between the side effects and the main effect. Uh, and it's good uh, to say the decision is out there now. But I think uh, one has to be careful not to throw out the baby with the water. Mm. And I guess a part of the uh, the a big part of the policy response that has enabled um, the outlook for the European e Union to be as solid as it is is the fiscal response. And I'm curious if you think that the current commitment at the EU level is sufficient when it comes to fiscal support here on out. Well, the fiscal support in Europe compared to the US has so far been essentially or almost exclusively national. And it has been pretty high. And compared to the US, uh, most of the fiscal response has been through automatic stabilizers, a mechanism which is much smaller in the US. Now we have uh, a program, the Resilience and Recovery Fund in front of us. Uh, and the importance is to get this program going uh, and to have for uh, the proposals in as soon as possible, which means by the end of April, and to sp start spending as of uh, 1st of July, if possible. Sir, I just want to go back to the PEP purchases uh, because now we have the data from March. It does show an actual increase in the quantity that ECB have bought versus the previous month. So uh, sticking to what the ECB pledged to do with the last meeting. However, if you look at the details, it shows that there has been very little deviation from the capital key. Even though the ECB have reiterated time and time again that they plan to use all flexibility. Why aren't the ECB using all the flexibility? Well, the PEP is put in such a way that uh, you can use the flexibility if you need it. If there's no need for flexibility, you don't use it. Because at the end of the day, the capital key should be respected. And what it has shown that there was no deviation is uh, that there were not uh, high differences between the countries. So there was no need uh, to spend in an asymmetric manner, which is good news, which shows that our program and our our conviction and our credibility is fully confirmed.